right. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, the World Cup has kicked off. Qatar nil, Ecuador 2, no match fixing going on. I actually expected a little bit more from Qatar. I didn't watch the match, but I just saw the highlights. Lots of hype about Moses Caicedo. Um, Gonzalo or Golazo Plata, we'll talk about that. There's another player that's been named about. Obviously, Anna Valencia with two goals. A couple of Chelsea-related news as well, so let's get on with this. All right, all right, all right. Here we go, back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. World Cup has kicked off. We will do a live stream. I know I've been promising this Chelsea players, following Chelsea players live stream uh, and all the players that are involved. It will happen tomorrow morning. Um, it's just been a hectic weekend. Haven't been able to get around it. But we will get through um, you know, the live stream where we can talk about all the Chelsea players that are involved in the World Cup. What do we expect? Who's going to shine? Who's not going to shine? Who's going to flop? So we'll do all of that. Um, the real, you know, all of the Chelsea players really kick things off from, from here on in. But first up, ladies and gentlemen, Qatar nil, Ecuador 2. Uh, as I said, didn't watch the match because it was in zombie hours for me. So woke up, saw the highlights, a couple of really good goals from Anna Valencia. Obviously, one of them was, was a penalty, but the second one, nice header. Um, but the hype, as you know, the hype, I mean, we're not going to spend time talking about Anna Valencia, nor are we going to you know, sit here and talk about Qatar because there was a lot more expectation from Qatar. But uh, I think the nerves just got the better of them. The hype, however, is all about Moses Caicedo. So I thought, let's see what people are saying in social media, especially Premier League panel, who's a very, very good uh, Twitter account, tactical Twitter account. And this is what he had to say about Moses Caicedo. Obviously, in regards to Ecuador, it's always going to be Moses Caicedo for Chelsea fans being linked. And not just Chelsea fans. There's a lot of Premier League fa um, Premier League clubs that are linked with Moses Caicedo. Yeah, very, very good player for Brighton. The beauty of Moses Caicedo is he can perform both roles in the double pivot. You can use him as a deeper six who takes the ball off the defense due to his press resistance or slightly higher up his ball carrying and ball progression is good top defensive work in both roles. So this literally came after the victory against Qatar. Look, I know we don't want to, um, you know, have Qatar as the benchmark for Moses Caicedo. We see what he does in the Premier League. But this is the thing. Moses Caicedo is quite capable of playing as a number six, as the deepest midfielder, or as a number eight, as a box-to-box. -box. So I'm keen to see Moses Caicedo in the next few matches. I think he's got a match against Senegal and Netherlands. I think that's where the litmus test for for him will, will be there. But then again, I mean, I don't want to judge just purely based on those two games. We know what we see in the Premier League. So uh, even if he has a substandard game, we know uh, how, how capable he is. This is Moses Caicedo's stats versus Qatar. 92% pass accuracy, 54 touches, four, 44 passes completed, two out of three ground duels, one, two interception, midfield maestro. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've watched... Um, Ecuador versus Qatar, Qatar versus Ecuador. Uh, let me know. Let me know what you thought about Moses Caicedo because, as I said, I've just watched the highlights. I didn't watch the entire match. Zombie hours for me. Um, I'm not I'm not surprised that Moses Caicedo had a decent enough game, but you let me know how he went. The second bit of news that came out from this particular match is a lot of people have just been noticing on social media talking about Gonzalo Plata. Now, as I said, I've not watched the entire match. Maybe I should just because of this particular player. But Ben Jacobs, this is what he had to say about Gonzalo Plata. Impressed by Gonzalo Plata, who also scored three goals in World Cup qualification. Fast, direct, and can pick a pass. Contracted at Valladolid until 2027, but several top clubs keeping tabs on him for the future. Leeds, Atletico Madrid, and Roma have all looked in the past. I mean, <clears throat> once again, if you've watched the particular match, let me know what you thought about Gonzalo Plata. The World Cup, this is what it's exciting, right? Like, you know there's going to be special talents that's going to come out of it, uh, that breakthrough talent that everyone will focus on. I remember in the previous World Cups, uh, there's always been that sense in recent times. People talking about James Rodriguez, if you remember, 2014, Colombia. Um, every World Cup, even last World Cup, I'm pretty certain, I uh, can't really exactly remember from the last World Cup, but in the last Euros, you know, Denmark with Damsgaard and Mihail. I think, I think, yeah, Dumfries and all those guys. I don't know if Netherlands were they in the World Cup? No, but I think Dumfries is one from the Euros as well. Mihail from Euros as well on that right side. 
all of these players, they started getting that hype. So you know it's going to happen. And uh, one to look out for, Gonzalo Plata. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's now talk about some um, some Chelsea news. But before we do that, there's another two. Yeah, Moses Caicedo is great, but make sure you keep an eye on this kid, Gonzalo Plata. There you go. I might have to, might have to keep a tab on Gonzalo Plata. Could be, could be, could be someone, um, someone uh, interesting to follow. Up and coming superstar. Okay, some Chelsea news now, ladies and gentlemen. You are gonna feast. Look out. Chelsea have reportedly made a U-turn on Cristiano Ronaldo and are now ready to step in if Manchester United follow through with their plan to sack him. Look, I've not been able to talk about Ronaldo. Uh, well, not that I've not been able to. I haven't. I haven't talked about Ronaldo since uh, Man United statement. This is how I feel. All right, this is the genuine feeling. And I know some of you guys might think, oh, yeah, this likes Ronaldo. He's biased against Ronaldo. Maybe, maybe it is. The way I look at it is Cristiano Ronaldo will go down in this particular sport as the legend of the game. No doubt about that. Him, Messi, they'll go down as a couple of phenomenal legends of the game. And the numbers, the the quality, the all the different moments that these guys have given to the, the world of football is unbelievable. You don't treat Cristiano Ronaldo like a normal human being. This is Cristiano Ronaldo. This guy is a superstar. Yes, he's aging. Yes, he may be on the decline, but he's still damn good. Last season, in a diabolical Man United season, he still ended up becoming Man United's top, um, yeah, Man United's player of the year and top goal scorer as well. He was he scored, I think, what, 20 Premier League goals, something like that, only a few goals away from Golden Boot. And if you look look at his history, not just last season, look at every other season before last season. This guy is an absolute goal-scoring machine. This season is the first season where he's having a bit of a topsy-turvy situation. But as per his interview, it's quite clear he's not in a, in a state of mind which allows him to play well. He's not happy. He feels unwanted at Man United. He feels like he's betrayed. And I kid you not, look... The biggest culprit for me in this whole situation is Man United. Man United, if they had plans that they're not going to utilize Ronaldo this season, they should have been clear with Cristiano Ronaldo and said, look, mate, we've got a new gaffer. The gaffer doesn't fancy you. It's up to you. You can look for a club. Obviously, it has to be within our, our, our you know, it's got, to, it's got to make sense for Man United as well. Um, but you're not in our plans. The best we can do for you is be in the bench and you're going to be a rotational player. And obviously, that would have been not something Cristiano would have accepted. He would have then had to make a choice. Either he leaves or, or um, you know, he himself terminates the contract. He he has to probably go up to Man United and say, look, you know, don't have to pay me. Don't have to do anything. Just, just let's come to a mutual agreement and finish the contract off and we move on. Or Man United themselves could have said, you know what? Look, let's let's just cut it. We don't need you. You don't want to be here with the with the kind of uh, role that we're going to give you. Um, let's let's just end it. So either you know there's a lack of communication. If there was communication, this could have been mutually ended last summer. For that not to happen, I think I think it's strange. And then Ronaldo said he was looking forward to being a Man United. He couldn't care less about Man United not making into the top four and not being in the Champions League. He wanted to actually help out. Now, whether you believe that or not, that's up to you. But he had he had the vision that he would stick around. He obviously didn't think that he's not going to be utilized. And this is where I feel the communication lacked. And obviously, with all the personal stuff that he's gone through as well, I don't think it was right the way he's been treated. And look, Eric Ten Hag, whatever he's doing, he's doing it for, for the team, for the club, betterment of the club. No problems. But I think you need to be clear with these type of players. These are not your normal human beings these are sensational superstars phenomenal superstars and they don't come often in the world of football players like messi players like ronaldo these, these are like proper generational when people talk about generational these are proper generational so now in regards to chelsea you know me man like i said of, of a happy ronaldo we know what he's capable of doing um and you know someone like Graham potter should be smart enough to be able to utilize someone like Cristiano Ronaldo. You look at Messi at PSG or Messi at Argentina. Messi don't run around. Messi don't press. Messi at times walks. You have the rest of the team trying to play a star that gets the best out of Messi. And of course, Messi is far more talented than Ronaldo. He produces a lot more assists. But similarly with 
you know, Cristiano Ronaldo, you know he bangs in goals, man. So if you create a system to get the best out of the one player that is actually unbelievable, why not? If that helps you win games, why not? Right now, we, we our team is not good. We can sit here and go, no, nah, why should we bend over backwards for one player? Look at our team, man. Our team doesn't have any superstars. Our team lacks goals. Our team lacks vision. Our team lacks any sort of charisma, any sort of belief. It is boring as hell. Why not have a talisman like Ronaldo friend, and create a team that, you know, focuses on supporting him and he can bang in the goals and we win matches? At the end of the day, it's all about winning matches. I don't care what other players are feeling. Oh, how's how's this player going to feel? Or how that player is going to feel when, when Ronaldo comes around? That, that's where Graham Potter, like, is he capable of managing big players? That's the big question. Maybe he's not. Maybe Graham Potter is not capable of, you know, managing players in the ilk of Cristiano Ronaldo and so, for, so on and so forth. And we're going to talk about the next player as well. But look, I, I understand. A lot of you guys may not want Cristiano Ronaldo at Chelsea Football Club. I get it. You have your reasons. You think he's past it. It's not going to work hard and it's not going to fit in. I get it. But I just feel a player of his quality. And, and as Ronaldo said, football is not only about football anymore. It's a business. So you got to think about from that point of view. And Tom Bowley, I think he fancies this massively. He does fancy this massively. Look, I still think he's probably going to go somewhere in the in the likes of PSG, maybe. Um, I don't know what's going to happen with Mbappe over there. Maybe, maybe all of all four, <laughs> you know, Ronaldo, Mbappe, Neymar, Messi, all four could play. Um, but we'll see, man. I, I think Chelsea are probably a strong candidate to get Cristiano Ronaldo. All right, next up, ladies and gentlemen, he's another. He's another one of those egotistic players. Um, Graham Potter is going to have his handful, and this looks like is potentially going to happen. He's going to come back to Chelsea Football Club. Chelsea are evaluating Romelu Lukaku, and new owner Bowley has hinted that he wants to change his strategy. So the Blues could bring Lukaku back to England and put him on the market. How do you guys feel about that? Look, he could be back, put him on the market. Who knows who wants him? He's not having a very good time at Inter Milan. He's been injured a lot, and... I think Inter, they're past it as well. They, they get this feeling that this Lukaku saga, it was fantastic a couple of seasons ago. Now, things have moved on. And, and this is what happens in life, man. You know, he, he left. He chose to leave Inter Milan. And he's not going to rekindle that situation back again. And now he's getting injured. Uh, he's not fully fit. Apparently in the World Cup as well, he's not going to play the first two matches. That's the other factor. I can't wait for Ronaldo to kick things start, uh, kick um, start the World Cup, uh, you know, campaign. I'm really looking forward to Ronaldo, uh, along with all these Chelsea players. But yeah, Romelu Lukaku is one to look out for as well. Let's see what he's capable of. But first couple of matches is going to miss out. Whether Belgium even makes it to the next round is a massive question mark. So look. Let me know, let me know, ladies and gentlemen, how you feel about Lukaku possibly coming back. Further, uh, this tweet goes on to say, Lukaku's return to Inter has been far, uh, has so far been a flop. Big Rom has seemed far from a player who had dominated this area and has spent more time in the hospital than on the pitch. In fact, in June, Romelu will return to Chelsea thanks to the expiry of the annual and onerous loan at Inter. There are many options, even if one that seemed more obvious, i.e. the renewal of the loan, is now losing share. Um, I won't be surprised if Inter Milan don't extend this guy's loan. Can he potentially fit? Do you know what? This guy's not past it. He really isn't. And I said it last season as well, man. Romelu Lukaku, he's another one of those same cases. Ronaldo, I said, focus on his strength. Create a team that gets the best out of him. This is what Inter Milan did back when he was banging in goals. Inter focused on his strength and used to feed the ball to him quick so he can take on the defenders early as opposed to when everyone was, you know, falling back into the defense and the structure of the opposition was compact. You've got to be able to release him quicker, man. Release the pass to him quick so that he can catch the defenders out, hold the ball up, link up. All of those things, if we just focus, and, you know, players like his ilk and, and Ronaldo as well, they, they talk about... They want to feel wanted. They want to feel happy. It's important, man. It really is. Look, it's Hakim Ziyech as well. Very important. And I don't know, man. You know, Graham Potter, Graham Potter, Danny Welbeck in Brighton could potentially utilize Lukaku in that sense. Do you know what I mean? So, look, 
I personally don't want him back after what he's done with Chelsea Football Club. I don't think he wants to be back as well. But if there can be a compromise being found, if they can, you know, sort of forget the past, if they can move on, who am I to stop any of that? But I'm definitely hurt with what he's done with Chelsea Football Club. It's not, he's not of the Ronaldo status, do you know what I mean? And even if you were, like, you don't do, he, he basically sort of on his own will, created an interview and then started to talk down on Chelsea Football Club and reminiscing about, you know, uh, Inter Milan. Ronaldo's case is not the same. Ronaldo's case is where he feels provoked by Eric Ten Hag and Man United. It's two different things, man. This guy, things were actually were looking all right. Um, obviously, he got injured. Then he had COVID, I believe. And then he just did that interview out of nowhere. And before the interview, when he did come back, he was actually starting. I don't know what happened. And then he started attacking everyone. So... Two different cases. But, ladies and gentlemen, let me know. Would you take Ronaldo, Lukaku? Ronaldo, Lukaku up front. Madness. It may not look good as well. Then there's Aubameyang as well. What's going on? All of these strikers. Is there a spot for everyone? Probably not. Let me know how you feel. Let me know how you feel about Moses Caicedo. Uh, Gonzalo Plata as well. Ecuador beating uh, Qatar 2-0. World Cup has kicked off. Smash the like button if you've enjoyed this. If you're here for the first time, subscribe, hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. I shall see you guys, promise, this time, promise, we'll see you guys yeah, live tomorrow, Monday, UK time, I don't know, about 9.30, 10 a.m. We'll see. Um, and we'll talk about the Chelsea players involved in the World Cup as the World Cup has kicked off. Until next time, see ya.